Okay, my question for you this morning, which do you think would be easier? Leviticus or Matthew? Oh, I got one saying Matt. Who said Matthew? <laughs> you got people pointing her out back here. It's like, it wasn't me, but I heard it back here. <laughs> Let's look at him for a second. Leviticus says, don't reap all of your, all of your, all of your harvest. Leave a little bit so that others can come and glean, right? Farmers, do you want to leave stuff in your field? No, you don't. You want to take it all because you want to have it all and you want to get the, the profit from it, right? Because you worked hard to get that. But he's saying here, God is saying to the people, don't take everything. When you, when you go and harvest, leave the edge roads and leave your gleaning. Leave that that's fallen on the ground for someone else to come who doesn't have money to buy so that they can pick it up. Right? And then he says, don't deal falsely with anyone. Don't lie. Never swear falsely. You can't defraud your neighbor. You can't steal. You can't keep wages from someone till the morning. You have to pay them that day. You can't revile the deaf and put a stumbling block before the blind. You can't render an unjust justice. Don't look to someone simply because they're poor and give them a good justice. And don't look someone because they're rich and give them what, what someone else deserves. Right? Don't go around slandering people and don't profit from another person's downfall. And don't hate in your heart any one of your kin or you, or reprove your neighbor or you, cause you will incur that guilt. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't take vengeance. Don't bear a grudge. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's Leviticus. Matthew says, don't resist an evildoer. If anyone strikes you on one cheek, turn to the other. If anyone sues you to take your coat, give them your cloak as well. If anyone forces you to carry something a mile or go with them a mile, go with them too. If you, you've heard it say to love your neighbor and hate your enemies, but love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Right? Greet everyone. And here's the kicker to the Matthew one. Be perfect as God is perfect. So which one's easier? Leviticus. I would probably go with Leviticus. But here's the kick. Here's the thing. All right. We have to understand what Matthew is saying, because can any of us actually do what Jesus is telling the people in the Sermon on the Mount to do? Or to put it another way, I was just I was at JYG yesterday, which is where Carrie is at with a couple of our young people this morning. Um, the, the speaker there is named Aaron Tidwell, and he asked us in one of the sessions, he said, I want by a show of hands, because the room wasn't big enough, he wanted us to do the, the whole stand up, and if you think this, go to this side, and if you think this, go to this side, and if you don't really know, stand in the middle. But he asked them the question, he says, by a show of hands, I want you to raise your hand, and I want you to raise your hand. Who here loves everyone in the world? There was, there was a couple of people that raised their hands yesterday. Um, but Aaron said, notice that I don't have my hand up. Notice I don't have my hand up. Because I'm working on that. Because God tells us we're supposed to do that. But how many of us actually do that? Because right? Jesus tells these people, remember, he's still collected here on the Sermon on the Mount. And this is where the disciples came up. And he started with, blessed are those who... Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are... Right? And then he goes on to say, you are... Do you remember? You are, what are you? The salt of the earth and you are a light to the world. Not, I want you to be or I hope you be or you can be or you should be. You are the salt to the earth and you are a light on a hill. You're doing this. You're shining a beacon on something. And then he went on. Last week's reading was some more of those hard sayings, right? On things that we have to do. And this week we get, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Right? That seems equitable. Right? 
Why was that written? In Leviticus. It's actually from Leviticus. Not in the passage we read this morning, but close to the passage we read this morning. But Leviticus, the the passage we have this morning says, you, you don't deal unjustly with anyone, right? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth means what? Right. If you cut off my finger, I can't do more to you than cut off your finger. But does that make me any better than you? Right. If I'm seeking retribution against you for what you've done for me, how does that make you any better than me? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was written to keep people from going over and above what they needed to do. But Jesus here is saying, you were told that you could do this before, but I'm telling you, you need to rise above this and be better than that. Right? And then he goes on. If someone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. This is an interesting one that we probably don't even get. Right? How many articles of clothing in Jesus' day did a person wear? Well, let's change it to a different question first. How many articles of clothing are you wearing right now? I see several people that have multiple shirts on. Like, I could say, take off your outer layer and you still have two more layers on. And I could say, take off the next layer and you'd still have another layer on. Right? I'm not going to do that, by the way. Don't don't be worried. (laughs) Right? We wear multiple layers of clothing. In Jesus' day, you had two. You had... A coat and a cloak. So what is Jesus saying here? Give him everything everything and stand before the person naked. Why? Because that brings shame on the person that asked you for it. Right? And that's where Jesus is telling you to go. If someone asks you for it, don't ask them why. Just give it to them. If somebody wants to borrow something from you, don't ask them why. Just let them borrow. Is that easy? No. Not at all. And then we get to the, to the next part here, right? This is Jesus and the slapping. We've already gone over the slapping. Do I need to go over slapping again? Do I need to bring Robert up and go over the slapping again? Right? <laughs> You turn your cheek to make them slap you with the inside of your right hand because they would have slapped you with the outside of their right hand. And it puts you on an equal standing. It's not about being a doormat. It's not about what being walked upon. Then Jesus says, you've heard it said, and, I've, and I kind of looked quick in the Old Testament to find this. It says, you shall love your enemy and hate, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I looked in the Old Testament to find where it said to hate your enemy. It doesn't actually say that in the Old Testament. It's, a, it's an understanding, though, that the, the Israelites would have gotten from their the understanding of love your neighbors, and if an alien or a stranger is in your midst and is living with you, then that person is also to be your neighbor. But then that excludes anyone who's not living with us, right? It makes a us and a them. It makes it easy for me to follow the law because I can love these people because all these people are like me. Right? I can love all of these people because all of these people are like me, but those people over there aren't like me, so I don't have to like them. I don't have to do anything with them. Jesus says, you got to love these people, and those people over there that you think that you can be impartial to or not like or hate, guess what? You have to love them as well. You have to love everybody and pray for those who persecute you. Right? Just as Jesus did. What, were, what did Jesus say on the cross? One of the last sayings of Jesus. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. He asked for forgiveness for the Roman centurions and the Roman people that were crucifying him, for the, for the Pharisees and Sanhedrin and the high council and all of those who were part of that plan and that plot to put Jesus to death. On that cross when he was dying, he said, forgive them. Is that easy? 
Because if we love those who love us, what reward do we have? If we seek retribution, like I asked earlier, if I cut off your finger and you come to cut off my finger, how does that make you any better than me? Jesus asks us to rise above. And here's the grace or the hope in this passage where when I read it the first time, it doesn't look like there is. Verse 48 be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And you're probably going to ask me, Pastor, how in the world is that grace? How is that hope? Because how can I be perfect? Right? Who here is perfect? I thought you were going to raise your hand there, Earl. You were pushing your glass up. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm done, and Earl's going to come up and take over. <laughs> Right? None of us are perfect. But here's the kicker. Right? The word that's translated as perfect in our text is telos. Or teleos. Actually, it comes from the Greek root word telos. And telos is found in Paul. Paul says, I press on towards the goal. Is telos. Or End is another way to translate telos. And teleos means complete or uh, what's that's not perfect. I lost the other word I was had there. It's complete. Be complete as your heavenly father is complete. Be made into the person that God has created you to be, as God created you to be that. And know that Jesus is calling you to rise above what others are doing to you. To not retaliate. To not seek retribution. Because Paul says to the Romans, I believe, that do not seek vengeance, but feed those who are hungry and have persecuted you. And pray for those who have persecuted you. Because in doing this, you will heap hot coals upon their head. And God will claim what needs to be claimed. By doing to them what they don't expect, they're not going to know how to take it. By doing to them what Jesus did for you, right? Loved you when you couldn't be loved. That's what we need to do to everyone. Because Martin Luther said that faith is not something that we get to. It's not a journey that has an end, but it's a constant changing and a constant moving down a road. Right? We can't possibly get there if we don't try to be what God has called us to be. To quote another Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. What did he say about darkness and light? Darkness cannot cast out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot cast out hate. Only love can do that. So the only way that we are going to change the world is if we stop retaliating and start loving. The only way that God's Spirit and God's mercy and God's grace is going to pour over this world is if we surrender ourselves to God and be made complete in Him, the creature He created us to be. And allow Him to love through us. To surrender ourselves to Him. And allow God's love to overflow into the world. Then that will bring the telos, the completeness, the perfection, the end that God has called us to. Peace in His kingdom. And you can play a part in that. By taking seriously what Jesus told us this morning. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who are different than you. Pray for those who are not like us. Don't just love those who are like you, but love everyone, because that's what God has done. So go into the world and share His love with everyone.